Welcome in another week. Blue Sky Live here with you on this Monday morning. Neil McCready, Chase Parm, Clark Ford Studio. We will uh, discuss some baseball. Rebels swept out of Oxford by the Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky uh, with a sweep of Ole Miss for the first time in program history. Uh, really dominating the uh, the final two days. Ole Miss has been run ruled in three of the last six SEC games they have played, and they fall to eighteen. That's not good. That's not excellent. Eighteen and eleven now, three and six in the SEC, and a trip to Fayetteville on deck. So it gets easier there for the uh, the Rebels with number one Arkansas awaiting Hagen Smith. We'll be waiting for them on Thursday night there uh, in the mountains of Northwest Arkansas. So we hit that a little bit. Uh, we get the men's final four is set and really a perfect tv uh final four for uh the networks i feel like in a lot of ways we'll get into that a little oh. bit uh the women match them tonight two teams already in north carolina state in on the men's and women's side first time since 2017 south carolina that's the case uh then iowa lsu and usc uconn tonight the uh the two games so two really good women's games tonight to uh finish that off as well we didn't talk about it on the podcast last week. No wrote about it in 10 thoughts, so I've got it written down too. Clay Kiffin talks about a cheat code for his offense with the helmet communications. All that and much more coming up on today's show. A show brought to you by every blue sky across Mississippi. I've been on I-55. They're out north Mississippi as well. Hope you guys got to meet Darth Vader. Bigfoot last week there in Macomb at the uh, new epicenter for blue skies. They had their grand opening today you can get back to that chicken spaghetti on your lunch specials 569 two sides bread 32 ounce drink or really any size drink but get the big one there's no reason not to again oxford exxon blue skies across the state of mississippi and again coming to you from the clark ford studio we are clark ford in amory mississippi 662-257-1900 call that number ask for Corey clark tell Corey what ford product you're looking for he'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours Right to the bottom line. There's no hassle. There's no haggle. You get your quote. The rest is up to you. You can shop it around. You can do what I've done. What I recommend that you do, and that's hop into a Clark Ford today. 662-257-1900. You get great service, great products. Corey and the people at Clark Ford, they really want to develop a long-term relationship with you, and they will uphold their end of the bargain once you make the call. 662-257-1900. Guests will join this week on the Campbell Clinic Hotline. The Campbell Clinic is in Oxford now, 2608 South Lamar Boulevard, Suite 102, just across the street from the cottages at Hooper Hollow. The Campbell Clinic provides full-service orthopedic care, everything from sports medicine to foot and ankle surgery to spine and total joint care to pediatric orthopedics, physical therapy, and more. To book an appointment, go to CampbellClinicOxford.com or call 901-759-3111. Walk-ins always welcome at the Campbell Clinic, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. So we're going to give it a basketball because football as the show goes on. Go ahead and kind of knock baseball out, get it out of the way. Again, Ole Miss uh, beaten 5-3 on Friday night. 17-9 on Saturday, 15-1 there on a Sunday, a, a run rule on Easter. Um, I, I don't know this, but it's a podcast. What the hell? I was told the reason they played on Easter is that both teams have to agree not to, and Kentucky did not agree to play a Thursday to Saturday series oh. because of their schedule. So, I don't know. Because Ole Miss typically does. That's what threw me off on that is there was only a few series that were uh, Friday to Sunday. I bet they, you were thrilled to be out there yesterday afternoon. Um, You can admit it. Well, I tell you what I did. I, I I got to watch Tennessee, Purdue in peace. I'm sitting there watching the game. My computer it was all good. I mean, I, I caught enough of what was going on did, out there. Did you get called for a foul on Zach Eby? We'll get there. Um, I got called. I'm I'm, I'm in foul trouble right now. Yeah, I, I got several things on that. I get to basketball. That's why I'm kind of getting baseball out of the way because okay. I'm going to get sidetracked otherwise. Uh, here today on the uh on the show. By the way, we have better help and AG one. I'll take care of the first one. Okay. Um. I have AG1 ready to go. Sounds good. So First thing every morning. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, look, we can get into the minutia of things. Um, it's not necessary. Uh, the, the the bigger thing, too, is I was sitting there kind of figuring out what to write because I was going to make a message board, message board post later today kind of talking about some of these same things because everybody does listen to the podcast. It's on the board, even though we appreciate you doing so. Um. They don't do anything to allow the other team to lose, and I don't. Oh. I, and I don't mean you're just sitting there waiting on the other team to lose, but they literally prevent it with a lot of things that they do. On Friday night, Kentucky scored one run on a normal baseball play. They won the game five to three. Raleigh Maddox was outstanding mm -hmm. on Friday night. He was. He was very good. 
he, he deserved a much better fate than what he got all the way around. Kentucky scored four runs on a not catching the ball at first base era, a throwing era, a wild pitch, and a pass ball. There were five wild pitches and pass balls on Friday night, on a Friday night game that every run's really important. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. On Saturday, no Ole Miss committed it. six errors. And Do- that wasn't the biggest deal. The 10 walks were. Yeah. Doyle finally had a subpar outing. He got a tight zone. He didn't locate in his fastball very well. Kentucky didn't chase anything. And it And you just can't you can't pass out 10 walks. Yeah, and it spiraled. He or hit it at some point. And then yesterday, they had on a Sunday, they had two hits going into the seventh inning yesterday. Now, you got to be 15. We got a lot of problems, but yeah. they had two hits going into the seventh inning. Gunnar Here. Dennis didn't get out of the first. They gave up five. I, I did love this. There was, you know, you know we, we we have a there's some we love. John Sokoloff, good dude, but some TV people. Yes. We're like four minutes into the press conference yesterday, and TV guy goes, um, so, Coach, uh, you know, what part of the game did you feel like it really got away from you uh, today? And Mike goes, how about the five in the first? It just dead painted. I thought that was that was that was showing restraint there. That was a good yeah. job, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I mean <laughs> I at least go, hey coach, I need the sound bite here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna ask this. Don't question. throw something at me. I'm yeah. just yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I look, here's the deal. I told you before we started the show, and it plays into it's why I wrote it yesterday's story the way I did. That's at rebelgrove.com talking about styles of play. And I'm I'm mad at myself that I didn't put more into it going into the week. Because frankly, I wrote about it in the mailbag on Friday and then just didn't voice it enough. It was my own fault. I kind of just thought Ole Miss might figure it out. And frankly, it made my life easier if they did. So I just kind of went with that at the moment. Um Kentucky is a great sample for what Ole Miss isn't. And it's that they have an incredibly clear identity. Mm-hmm. They know exactly who they are. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're overly talented one through nine. I was kind of texting with Kendall Rogers about it yesterday after the game. But they're fun to watch, and they do, they have a plan, and they try to execute that plan. Now, they're going to lose a lot of the game. They're going to lose some games to teams that just simply pitch and play defense well, and uh-huh. it's going to be hard to do that. Yep. But they are small ball oriented. But they'll get beat. They won't lose. Right. They're small ball oriented. They steal. They do hit and runs. They bunt a lot. They put pressure on you and try to stress you and then try to just execute fundamentally on defense and on the mound and just get into games and try to win close games and do these kind of things. And you look up and they're eight and one in the SEC. They're uber confident right now. Um, I don't know why they did it still. After Saturday's game, they lined up and took a picture with the scoreboard in the background. And I couldn't figure out what the significance was of that game for Kentucky huh. on Saturday. I don't, I don't know. know. But I, I caught myself enjoying watching them play. Mm-hmm. And Ole Miss right now has no identity. Um, their offense doesn't make a lot of sense because they put all this big emphasis on walking. And it's true. They didn't walk enough last year. It was a very viable thing. But what happens sometimes is you become completely non-aggressive. Passive. Yeah. You, you, you end up not mm-hmm. swinging enough. And they're not necessarily built as this big bashing home run team, but it's kind of what they've had to do to score runs. They don't necessarily execute a lot of small ball. I I, I don't know if if you said, hey, what is Ole Miss's offense? It's hard to answer that question. It's just sort of a collection of people that do different stuff individually. It's not there's not a lot of complete system to their lineup that makes a lot of sense. Um, I thought their body language was frankly pretty bad on Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, I yeah. just so I didn't see Saturday yesterday. And look, when you're getting your brains bashed in, sometimes your body language is bad. But their body language was really bad, and Kentucky's was really good. I mean, Kentucky plays with just a lot of confidence. I told you this. I watched. It's impossible on the weekend when you a have family in town and b you are watching basketball as well. It's impossible to watch a ton of baseball, but I did watch a good bit of the Florida Mississippi state series. And I watched a little less, but a good bit of the LSU Arkansas series. And all four of those teams have, and they're different talent. Obviously I think Florida is the most talented team in the conference, but they all, they all have an identity that you, you kind of know what to expect when you turn on Florida. Frankly, you kind of know what to expect this year. When you turn on Mississippi state, they really grind at you. You they've lost five of nine games, but they've made people beat them. 
Well, yesterday, Florida just came back and beat them. They took a lead into the night, then Gainesville won all three games. Now they pitched to Cagligan on yesterday, which was just, yeah. big brain stuff. But yeah. no, they're, 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 they've played much tougher. They're better on, this year on their little the They're tougher. They are. They are. They're, they're pretty resilient. They're tough. Um, LSU's two and seven, but the wins are coming. And, ha- and then, you know, Arkansas's eight and one, and, and they're kind of starting to figure it out on offense a little bit. What AM do this weekend? Uh, they're six and three now, so they got, they got, okay. they got two or three. Okay. Yeah. They got three. It's something that came up after Tennessee, frankly, but it's true now, too. Even beyond everything we're saying, you're not ever going to win every coin flip at all. And, and Ole Miss gave one away on Friday that was close. But you're nine games into a conference schedule now, and you did not give your chance yourself a chance to win at all in five of the nine games. Yeah, it's a recipe for disaster. You completely were not competitive in five of the nine conference games. That is the problem. Yes. It's not simply a record or anything else. Is that you've got to be in games to win games. And so you start wondering at that point, do you have enough pitching to get through this grind? And I don't know that the answer is yes. And I saw, maybe you wrote that in 10 Thoughts maybe somewhere. And I, I got to thinking about it yesterday. I think they have enough pitching if they follow a formula. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because Connor Spencer is one of their better arms. He didn't throw this weekend. They threw mallets when they were already down five nothing. You have to stay, they have to stay on the path. They're pitching and their like their defense and their other stuff is taking them out of the way that they need to pitch to win games. Yeah. Because when Dole gets gets gone in the third, and then Dennis doesn't get out of the first, yeah. well then you're trying to figure out how to scuffle it and play it through. And you know you threw nickels in innings that weren't consequential because. You had to. You didn't play a whole lot of consequential innings. Yeah, that's the thing. Is that I still think they're okay on the mound if they get starting pitching. Now, they've just kind of rotated it. Maddox is obviously going to throw next weekend. I told you, and we'll talk about this as the week goes on, I would put anybody on Thursday. I would say I'm leaving Riley Maddox on Friday. I'm leaving Liam Dole on Saturday for pitch count reasons and both being kind of new to the starting rotation. You take Jay Johnson's approach last week. And if if I hit my way somehow to a competitive game against Hagen Smith, great. But I am trying to win the other two games. Yeah. I'm not going to waste a Riley Maddox effort on a day short of rest against Hagen Smith on Thursday. You can say I'm shying away from it if you want to or whatever. I'm trying to make sure I get a game somehow in that series. The only flaw in that strategy is that if you get blown out on Thursday, they don't use McIntyre. And McIntyre's there for a long outing on one of the other two days. That's fair. That's that's it. That's the only flaw. Smith gave up back to back homers to LSU. Um, and then he started out strong, gave up the two homers, then came back and and kept the minute, and then they took a lead, and then McIntyre finished it, if I recall correctly. I don't remember all of it. Um I don't there. I don't, it's 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 look you're three and six you got to go to arkansas come home to play mississippi state then go to georgia you haven't beaten state at home since 2015 in a series and you got to go over there and deal with condon and all that stuff and you got to go up they to really Ar- hit they hit a lot tennessee shot them out yesterday and i kind of went whoa that was impressive yeah. for nine innings condon's uh Batting average, this is a crazy stat. His batting average is 35 points higher than his BABIP. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> his batting average overall is way higher than his batting average on balls in play, meaning he's hitting a shit ton of home runs is what that means because that doesn't count towards your badminton. After watching Wyatt Lankford mm-hmm. hit for Texas this weekend, the Rangers, not Texas Longhorns, the Rangers. Yeah, the Rangers. After he played at Florida last season, uh-huh. I would take Condon. You take the bat over Smith. And I draft Smith, a bat Smith's and buy really an arm. Good. Smith's really good. Yeah, but I draft yeah. a bat and buy an arm. I think so. I think that's what I do. Because he can I mean. Now, if Smith falls into my lap, then I'm good with it. Condon's OPS right now is in the 1800s. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's chasing Dave Magadan for real. Like, it's SEC record kind of stuff coming here, potentially. I heard a story. Mike Maddox, the lead... I guess fairly legendary pitching coach at this point. The young, the older brother of Greg Maddox is the pitching coach with the Rangers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was on the practice field, one of the backfields in late February, early March. And he walked off the field and he said, I just watched the best player at our organization. And someone goes, oh, Seeger out there? And he goes, no, 
Langford. Really? And the guy was like, dude. He goes, I'm just telling you. Really? Best player in our organization. Don't yell at me. Yell at Mike Maddox. You didn't say it. I didn't say it. I didn't. Um, Look, it's nine games into a schedule. If anything, we have been taught that things change and adapt and whatever. But I keep getting this asked this question, so I'm, I'm not going to shy away from it. Um, Mike's contract, just the way it works uh, first. He's on, he, he signed a six-year deal after 2022, paid him 1625 annually. Um, he will have four years remaining on that contract after this season. Uh, use the foundation for additional years off the four. That's something that's happening with Bianco, Kiffin, Beard. It's not new to, to Mike. Um, and caveat here, I do not know Mike Bianco's buyout. But if it follows the typical structure of other Ole Miss coach buyouts that I've been aware of in the past, his buyout would be somewhere at uh, four, 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 five after this year, something like that. That is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I get how everything happened, and if you want to be critical of the contract, that's what it is. I get paying him a ton of money after twenty twenty two, but in totality, when you looked at it, they went fourteen and sixteen in the SEC and got in by the skin of their teeth, and there was no sign that the regular season was going to be this obvious success moving forward. And it is a contract that hamstrings in that way, that mm -hmm. you're just kind of stuck here with, I don't know what to do. I don't know what it would look like at that point. Because, look, it, it, it's it's the it's the biggest difference here. You can talk about portal era. We can put, I, I could go down the rabbit hole that we're not doing today because it's a podcast, a lot of other stuff. But at the end of the day, Mike Bianco's calling card for 20 years was consistency and damn good regular seasons. He only went 13 and 17 one time through like 18 years or something, 17 years. And yet now we're talking about he's 9 and 30 in the SEC since winning the national championship. Wow. 9 and 30. They are 6 and 18 in their last 24 home SEC games. What, really? Yeah. They went 3 and 12 in the SEC at home last year. I'm pulling up their schedule here because I'm curious what is after the next few. I mean, th that's the thing is that I, I, I guess that's the part where I kind of sit here and look and sit and look, I was in the middle of it and whatever and all that stuff. And hindsight is not fair in a lot of cases. And I completely understand that. But NC State gets into that tournament and there's no doubt Mike Bianco would be out at the end of the year if it didn't turn around. Agreed. I mean, and again, that's not the whole story. No. But when you talk about program health and kind of what's going on. So here's where they are. At Arkansas for three. Yeah. Mississippi State at home for three. Mm -hmm. At Georgia for three. Mm -hmm. Alabama at home for three. Okay. Auburn there at Auburn for three. Okay. Texas A&M when they're good. And Here. then at LSU. No, LSU at home. At LSU. At LSU, okay. A&M at home at LSU. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> So your finish is brutal. You could play well and go two. Because I know LSU's two and seven, but let's yeah, not. I'm just telling you. Yeah. I'm tell wins are coming for LSU. I'm just telling you. Mm -hmm. It's hard. The it's, league is hard. So my point is you could play well in those last two weekends and go two and four. They're three and six now. That puts you at five and ten. You have to start really making hay. Because, again, it's 13 to sniff. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to make hay with Alabama, Mississippi State, Auburn. Do math. That's six and that's 10 and whatever the rest of the way. 10 and 11 the rest of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Not a dumb number, but. No, I mean, that's why I wrote it's you still have time. But you They've been swept at home four times since the beginning of last season. You can't go to Fayetteville and get swept. They've won two SEC series since the beginning of last season. So they've been swept at home twice as many times as they've won the series since the beginning of last season. It's bad. It's, yeah. All the numbers, I mean, I, it's right there in front of your face. It's not, yeah, 9 and 30 in the SEC since. And that was coming off of 14 and 16. They haven't had a winning SEC record since Doug Nikhazy pitched. But, I mean, people would drop to their knees and thank the gods right now for 14 and 16 if you just offered it. Well, 14 and 16 is fine sure. in today's SEC. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Just getting there is really difficult. Here's something that was mentioned yesterday, 
And again, this is not really playing into it. You can get there. This is not what Mike Bianco is going to be kept or fired on, okay? But Ole Miss has a coach that's top five nationally in salary, all those different things. And the NIL era, in theory, should be easier than Ole Miss than the old era because they could pay for players. Yeah, They're not hamstringed by the 11 and 11.7 that was the case beforehand. That's got to be the frustrating thing for the fan base is that this is actually supposed to be an easier era for Ole Miss in theory. Yeah. Ole Miss hasn't hosted a super regional. I get that's eight teams, but I mean, it's where they are. Yeah. 2009. Oh, wow. I hadn't thought about that. They hosted three in five years from 05 to 09. They haven't hosted a super regional game since 2009. That's 15 seasons. And if you compare that to the teams that are your contemporaries, yeah. That, yeah, I don't know exact stats, but yeah, sure. Yeah, but I mean, you know, LSU. LSU certainly hosted mm-hmm. one last year. Yeah. Arkansas, Texas A&M, I'm sure, at some point. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, within the last couple of years, they've hosted Supers. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. Vanderbilt. Yeah. Auburn. Did Auburn host? I don't know. Yeah. Florida. Yeah. That's who you're competing against. Yeah. That's your competition, and the competition's about Kentucky to... last year. Yeah, and now Texas is going no, to No, Kentucky went to LSU last year, sorry. They hosted the regional. Yeah. The Just... guy, credit to the guy at Kentucky, by the way. He's done a hell of a job. A hell of a job. Yeah, Minjones done a hell of a job. Done a hell of a job. They are they are very confident. They Again, they they, they impressed me as an organizational program yesterday. No, they really did. I, I, I enjoyed watching them play. They create their own energy. They have horrible uniforms, but I enjoy the gray them. hat. Is the logo the so weird bad. cat thing on the hat? What are you doing? Copy the Colts, copy the Dodgers, and call it a day. Use the you have interlocking blue and white. interlocking UK. It's good. It's great. And you can either go Wildcats or Kentucky whatever. across the front, whatever you need to do, and just call it. E- just go basic. Black and you have the best and- colors. Yeah. Use them. Use them. Yeah. And don't deviate from them. You don't need to add blacks and grays and pewters and chrome. It's not necessary. Yeah. If you need a little help with that, the show is sponsored by BetterHelp. So they will help you. A lot of times we spend our lives wishing we had more time. Question is, time for what? If it was unlimited, how would you use it? Best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedules to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. You can talk to somebody, let them help you through those things, not family or friends or anybody with preconceived notions. Let you get a professional who can help you out. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Entirely online, convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. Thought a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn how to make time for what makes you happy. Visit BetterHelp, betterhelp.com slash MPW. That is 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MPW. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. I drink AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health, sustained energy, immune system support, and I hate taking those big supplement pills. I drink AG1 every morning. I love knowing I'm doing something good for my body, giving my body the nutrition it craves, and covering my nutritional bases. Covering my nutritional bases for the day literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. Done. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day. Pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit. With the highest quality sourced ingredients, it's a win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need for your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash MPW. That's athleticgreens.com slash MPW. Check it out. Uh, Also brought to you by our friends at uh, Seago Wealth Management. My 10 weekend thoughts are uh, up a little late, but they're up this morning. Brought to you by Seago Wealth Management. Are you retiring soon? How long should you take Social Security? What accounts should you pull from first? Are you already retired? Should you consider Roth conversions? These are just some of the questions that can only be answered with the personalized retirement income plan. Andrew Sego with Sego Wealth Management specializes in helping folks just like you come up with their retirement game plan. Whether you meet at his office in Collierville or pres- prefer Zoom from anywhere, schedule a free discovery meeting and see what they can do for you. It's rebelsretire.com. 
We're also brought to you by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating. It's April now. The temperatures are going to start warming up. You want to make sure that AC is uh, ready to roll and in tip-top shape. Get in touch with our friends at Comer and Southern. Different names, same great people, products, services. If you live in Oxford, Batesville, Tupelo, or the surrounding area, call Comer. 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or the surrounding area, call Southern. 662-429-4429. Uh, yeah, and I guess a good point there. I was reading the stream. I mean, Ole Miss hosted a couple of those. You know, it's it's the weird thing is they actually had some help a couple of those times on the Super Regional host back in the day under Mike. They've been a national seed twice where you're a top eight seed going into the postseason. If you win, no matter what, you're playing at home without any help or anything. That was 2005 when they hosted Texas, and then that was the 2018 team that lost to Tennessee Tech that would have hosted Texas the next weekend. Had they uh they they won that um in 2006 they hosted because Miami went into the Nebraska regional and beat Jabba Chamberlain and the Cornhuskers in that oh, regional yep and then in 2009 they hosted because Virginia went to UC Irvine and won that uh, Steven Strasburg was the two seed San Diego State in that as well or maybe the three seed whatever but uh, Virginia won that and then ended up in Oxford in 2009 so. It's been anyway. a minute. Been a minute since then. Been a minute. Yeah, fourteen Lafayette, and then Arkansas nineteen, Arizona twenty one, and then obviously uh, Southern Miss in twenty two. Um, all right, a couple things here. I guess we'll uh, we'll do this next. Uh, basketball final four for the men set. Alabama and UConn is on one side, and then Purdue and NC State. Uh, wow. Okay. I got a couple. We'll start on that side because the other side's whatever. First you off, you moved your hand foul. That's a foul. First off, I, I think I'm right on this. Think of the four teams that are in this thing, and you get UConn, which is name brand basketball school, mm-hmm. defending national champions. This run of games, everybody seeing. If I mean, it, not not hyperbolically, they literally went on a 30-0 run. It was 23-23, and then really it was 53-23 against a really good team. I mean, I mean, dead Illinois, star shit here. I, I watched Illinois ten times this year. They're really good. That that was thirty to thirty zero. I mean, Underwood was like, "Well, I didn't see that coming." <laughs> <laughs> hey, I get it. Yeah. So you get this. You get Alabama football school, big brand, first time in the Final Four, fun team, frenetic team, all that kind of stuff. Best team I saw in person. Sears, Oats, the whole deal. Yeah. And then on the other side, you get best player in the country in Zach Eady, or at least most dominant, wherever you want to park. He's the player of the year. And you get Purdue's at least a Big Ten team, name, all that kind of stuff. And then you get this ultimate Cinderella that's been a Cinderella before and all this stuff with NC State as they've won nine or ten in a row. Feeling and, like 83 again a little, isn't it? You weren't around, but. Look, here's my deal on I've this. I've been telling Carson, like, this. This what, is a me problem, okay? Why do, do, why do I keep wanting them to lose? I don't know. NC State bothers me for some reason. Really? And it's so stupid. I, I look, I'm, I'm admitting it's a me Why? problem. Maybe I hate fun. I don't know. I was pulling for Duke yesterday. You hate the big fat kid? I, no, I like it. He was fun. I watched him in Oxford. Yeah. That's right. I was pulling for Duke yesterday. Why? I don't know. I can't explain it, but I'm watching it and going, can we just end this? Really? I'm the Grinch. I mean, seriously. I, I don't know. I feel I'm mad at myself about it. Oh, I now want them to make it to the championship. And so I can convince myself Here's that, what they're I gonna, think it is. that they're going to no, beat no, no. UConn. Here's what I think it is. Okay. I don't think it has anything to do with NC State. Okay. I'm so, and, and again, I, I get it. It's me. Okay. I, I, you guys hear all my dumb sports takes because everybody has dumb sports takes. Okay. You just get to hear all of mine. <laughs> this Zach Eady thing drives me so crazy that I just don't think NC State can beat them. And I thought maybe Duke would have a better chance. I think I keep wanting NC State to go away because it makes the path harder for Purdue. I think that's what I'm doing. We got cheated yesterday. Okay, we did. We got cheated yesterday. I mean... Tennessee was better than them. I mean, did you see that quote I put on the board? I'm not sure. Okay, from The Athletic. Okay. Okay? This is a story that I don't know how... Maybe this got a ton of pub and I just didn't know it, okay? Maybe, maybe that's the case. Maybe maybe this is one of these things that it was out there and I just did not know it and and whatever. Let me find it. I feel like I sent it to somebody in a text. Maybe I didn't, but I'll find it on the board. So this is from, a I think Dana O'Neill is who wrote this. Okay. And she talked to a bunch of officials about how to defend Zach Eady because, look, 
it's not Zach Eady's fault. No, I do no, think no. a lot of times people end up hating Zach Eady, and it has nothing to do with Zach Eady. He seems like a nice dude, no problems, all good. Yeah, I have no problem with Eady. I think that's the problem here. But when it's called so whatever, and now he does a good job of not getting in foul trouble. He doesn't chase a lot of loose balls. He doesn't do a lot of things. He even kind of lets you by at times to avoid it. However, mm-hmm. yes. a lot of contact and whatever. So a quote in the in the athletic, and this didn't even hit. So I talked to a bunch of former officials, but this one isn't. He wanted to speak anonymously because he's a current coordinator of officials okay. in the NCAA. All right, here's his quote: "You don't want to put gray area fouls on him. You want to make sure the fouls he commits are more or less so obvious that everyone in the arena can say the ref had no choice." Okay. And goes on to say, as long as it's balanced with the other great players on the other side, every team has one or two players they need to have in the game for 30 minutes and the refs are aware of it. But nobody meets his star power, so he automatically gets that extra whatever. And now we're doing this confirmation bias. Zach Eady doesn't foul, and we're going to say that in our heads so we don't call fouls on Zach Eady. But that's not what bothered me yesterday. What bothered me yesterday was not the fouls that weren't called on Eady, but the fouls that were called yeah. on Tennessee. It you was, breathe on him, and it is a foul. I mean... Literally, they were not allowing them to defend them, and they took Tennessee completely out of the game because Tennessee was in foul trouble from the opening tip. Now, Tennessee blew a 11-point lead late in the first half, and Charles Barkley, to his credit, said if Tennessee loses the game, they lost it right there. And he was right. But they didn't let Tennessee guard Edie the way that Edie was allowed to guard Tennessee. Right. I have no problem with letting the game get physical. Mm-hmm. Let it got to get physical. It's cool. NBA games get physical well, every I, night. I, I'm not sure Purdue's not going to win the game because when those officials, Klingon's going to get fouled out. If Edie gets that whistle against UConn, yeah. Well, I'm just telling. And you. the sad part about that is that Klingon is a much better player than Edie. But I know he's not going to get Edie's whistle. Klingon's going to have three fouls in the first 12 minutes of that game. Hurley will will have an aneurysm. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean... I want UConn to win. I like greatness. I want UConn sure, to win. I have no problem with UConn winning. They're the best team. Um, I am... We're all falling in love a little bit with the big kid at, at NC State. Does we he are. does he get a favorable whistle or do they put him in foul trouble? That game I don't know if he's skilled enough to keep out of foul trouble. That game's only entertaining if he's on the floor. 100%. I mean they're they're fun, but he is what makes them fun. No, they have some other good players. I mean, I was pulling for Wes Rucker to go to the final four yesterday. That's how I felt about Edie in that situation, not Edie personally. Yeah. I was. Go Vols. Rocky Top. Whole deal. I was kind of frustrated. I turned it off in the last minute. I was like, I don't want to watch the end of this. I, I was frustrated by it also. I was because we can't have a real conversation. The basketball media just goes, Oh my God, he's the best player in the world. It's like, well, hold on. Are you not seeing this? But no, that could put a cloud over the tournament. Well, and and it kind of sucked too, because Dalton Connect was unbelievable yesterday. And that that gets just glossed over. I thought Connect was fantastic on a day where I felt. Ba- this is the part that I hated. I hated that Zakai Ziegler on that stage mm-hmm. had that game, played yeah. hard. He just missed shots, you know. Yeah, and some it just of didn't those, go down. Some of the shots normally go down for him. They just didn't go down. Um, I felt terrible for Houston the other night. Best player getting hurt, like just yeah, the way that, that ended. That sucked because they're really good. Yeah, Houston's good. But when you lose your best player in the early and it's just that it sucks. It's a crapshoot. It's what makes the tournament the tournament. But you sometimes get stuff like this where officials can dictate who wins a championship and injury can dictate who wins a championship. All that being said, if UConn keeps playing like this, none of it's going to matter. Because they are the best team. I mean, Bama better shoot that son of a gun lights out Yeah, on Saturday. They better hit every three. Because you can't, I mean, their ball movement, like it just, mm. Mm. defensively, oh, it's got a chore ahead of him. Well, because to, for, to win, you've got to keep Nelson out of foul trouble. And I don't know how Nelson stays out of foul trouble against those cats. 
we're back to kind of the Ken Palm thing too. And again, the NC State's an underdog, great story. Like I get they don't fit the narrative, but like I saw our boy Pat, he did a column yesterday, and he was like, "This is what makes the tournament great." The the selection rankings were like one sixteen twenty eight forty seven. And I was like, "No, the Ken Palm was one two four or something." Yeah, shut up. Shut up. The committee doesn't know more about it than the analytics do. No. No, I, I didn't say I grew up rooting for Duke. I said that <laughs> when you grow up, you tip in my era, you typically had to when you're watching Duke in North Carolina, pick one. Yeah. And I picked Duke, but I wasn't I woo, did t- Blue I did Devils. T- I did too. I always picked Duke. Yeah, I don't know. Over UNC. I have no idea why. Yeah, I don't either. I have no clue. But ne- no, never that, been to either that. place, yeah. Yeah. It was that. And I run sometimes in a Duke dry fit because I have a really good friend whose wife family went there and gave it to me. Like that's that's it. But otherwise, no. Is there a team you cheer against for no particular reason and you don't know why? Uh Michigan. Oh. And I, I don't know. I find myself not really being for Ohio State or Michigan. I find myself cheering against Ohio State sometimes and not really understanding why. Who do you cheer for that has no real reason? Because mine's like Virginia. For some reason, I want Virginia to win in things. And like, how the hell do I care? Arizona State. Really? They'll be playing and I'll catch myself <laughs> cheering for them. And I have no <laughs> idea why. You have no Clueless. connection there. No, no none, zero. I've been to Tempe once, but I mean. It's good, by the way. I like Tempe. Yeah, Tempe's cool. Yeah. But it wasn't enough to. I like the helmet. Okay. Like the helmet. Yeah, I, I, for whatever reason, Virginia. I find myself just kind of forced. Yeah, and I don't, yeah. I don't. I like Charlottesville a lot, though. I will say that. Yeah. I, I really like Charlottesville. So I have. But no, the, the TV is getting exactly what they wanted out of this tournament so far. You're getting big teams. You're getting power conferences. What's the number? You num- got some upsets. I'm probably m- messing you up, but what's the number tonight for LSU? You mean TV Iowa. ratings? Yeah, what's the TV rating? It'll break every record that's happened so far. Because you get all the mulky stuff. You get all the stuff. Okay, real quick there. <laughs> the Kim Mulkey story? It's not. Okay, first off, <laughs> wow. But no, here's what bothered me. And the Athletic did it this morning. Did you read the Pulse this morning? No. Okay. And I like the Pulse, typically. I and typically it's an do. LSU guy who writes the Pulse. So this even shocked me a little more that this is where he went with it. Is... They were talking about tonight, Iowa, LSU, again, UConn, USC. Two really good games tonight. Yeah. A lot of stars. Yeah. Angel Reese, Paige Becker is the whole deal. Juju yeah. Watkins. That person named Caitlin Clark. Um, But they were talking about Mulkey's tirade about the Washington Post, and the athletic pulse thing kept calling it unprompted. And it's like, it wasn't unprompted. Pat Forty opened his damn mouth. Kim Mulkey doesn't do that if Forty doesn't go swagging, circling, and talk about something he had no freaking idea about. 100%. It wasn't unprompted. He was an asshole, and then she responded. Now, look, she's going to attack everything, and it's who she is. Mm -hmm. I'm not letting her off the hook. That's not my point. But she doesn't do that if it's not for him. 100%. But that's what national media does. That's why I hate national media. They all rally around one another. Oh, the story's coming. I mean, they're untouchable amongst each other because when they all get together, they all just circle jerk one another. It was an 85% positive profile. It was good. It's fine. Kent Babb's a hell of a writer. I mean, it was interesting to me as a boy who grew up in Ruston. I knew all those names. I, I remember Sonja Hogue when she was at Louisiana Tech. Um, I went to school with Leon Bar- Barmore's daughter, Shannon. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, I remember I remember the controversy in Ruston. Who's the better guard, Kim Mulkey or Jennifer White? That was a controversy? Oh, yeah. It was a big thing. Really? Yeah. Um, I remember all of that stuff. So it was Dan Renault. I, rem- I mean, I knew Dan. Dan Renault was my dad's boss for years at, at Louisiana Tech. So, I mean, I, I, it's interesting to read the story. Sure. The story was, okay, she's, she's type A, like most coaches. She's a little nuts, like most coaches. She's very demanding of her players, like most coaches. At Baylor, which is a very conservative Baptist school, she was like, hey, you might want to keep some of that stuff on the down low. Probably like most people at Baylor, I'm guessing. 
She's got an estranged relationship with her dad and her sister, which is sad, but it's not uncommon. Not so. uncommon for people who are kind of wired nutty. And she's a hell of a basketball coach. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't really think big picture because she wants, just wants to win. And she's got a team full of sort of the same sort of players. And yeah, she's not giving you the lane. I'll tell you about the country. And, and uh, yeah, no, no, just, you know, she doesn't care that Caitlin Clark has been great for college basketball because Caitlin Clark is in her way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the story was fine. Ken's a hell of a writer. Yes. The story was fine. I, as opposed to that crackpot in the LA Times. Jeez. Good God. Could you suck up to the UCLA coach even more? I mean. There's a lot of that this weekend. Whew. God. And then she retweeted it and came out and apologized and said she didn't realize the content of it. See that? Yeah. The G- GJG makes a great point, and yeah. I'm going to say it. Kim Mulkey upset. You, you guys just don't understand most media. They didn't just love COVID. They adored COVID. COVID was right up the alley for a lot because you got to really, really, really be bold and, and, and show how just committed you were. To, and Kim Mulkey didn't give a damn about COVID. She was one of the people that very early on in COVID was like, this is stupid. Let's play. She just wants to coach basketball. And that really pissed off a lot of people. I don't know where Kent stands on COVID. I well, that's the thing. It, th- th- I guess that's my point in this is that Kent Babb didn't write a hit piece. Frankly, he wrote a column that was ve- or a profile that was very reminiscent of 20 or 30 years ago, yeah. what you would have seen in Sports Illustrated and different places and all those kind of things. Like it was a very old school article. But Pat that was Forty. Only, that's, that's my point. It was only clouded by other people who didn't know what yeah. was going on. Pat Forty hates Kim Mulkey. He wanted a hit piece. And wanted a hit piece. Yes. He wanted it to be all these egregious things that she had done. Because she doesn't, she's not left of center. And he and that upsets him. It's wild, frankly, given some of the personality, personal things involving him, but whatever. But it was fine. The story was fine. The story was published on the day of the Sweet 16. The truth is, the story was good for the sport. In the same good. in the same way that Caitlin Clark is great for the sport. This Iowa team is good for the sport, and they seem to know it, and Holly Rowe's doing the interviews, and they give Holly Rowe three or four questions in the middle of the game because I think the people understand that this is probably really a a rare opportunity for that sport to explode. It is a big night for women's basketball. You have four bona fide stars on the court in one night. You have Angel Reese against Caitlin Clark in the rematch and the whole deal, and then you've got Paige Beckers and Juju Watkins in the other game. You got Ari Emma, and you got the whole deal. You yeah. get a really big night of women's college basketball. Van right? Lith has already played the race card. Yeah. People are against my teammates because they're black. It's like, no, they're against Angel Reese because she taunted Caitlin Clark on the floor last year. That's why. Because people love Caitlin Clark. I do think the one part of that, though, is we are not used to as a country women taunting. So okay. we overplay it. Oh, well, you can't act like that. You're a woman. I do think we do some, we don't hold, men, we laugh it off a little more. Yeah. Like, we we focus and really break it down when a woman taunts. And it's like, okay. I but that was pretty rough last year. It was. I mean, but it wasn't it was, in her face. She was running through her. She face. wanted it to be in her face. But it wasn't. I mean, yeah. so I'm, but it was, I'm not defending Angel Reese. I'm just I saying, mean, had, like, had Caitlin Clark looked at her, it would have been in her face. Yeah. It was right there. And Caitlin Clark was two days removed from a performance against the best team in the country that will go down and that should go down as legendary. And look, the, the, the numbers are what they are because Angel Reese exists because you need a villain. Yeah. The best, that's what we talked about with Carolina. Yeah. I mean, with uh, Connecticut for years, they just beat everybody and it was whatever. Like you, you, you have to have opposition. Again, South Carolina is 36 and oh, they're in the final, they're in the final four. Mm-hmm. They beat Oregon state 70 to 58 last night, yesterday. We're not even talking about them. We're not talking about the number one team in the country with probably the most famous coach in the country. And they have to go through the other most famous coach in the country in Gino Ariema. And right? The, no, that's the other side. They play NC State. Okay, okay. Who would play in the semis? I guess it would be South Carolina, NC State, and then okay, Connecticut or USC. Yeah, because Iowa and SC can't play each other until till the final. 
Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's the way it sets up. I haven't. I don't have a bracket in front of me, but. Yeah, I have not memorized the women's bracket. Oh. I did watch. Well, I fell asleep, but I was watching um, Colorado, Iowa the other day. When I, I when Iowa plays like that, they're really good. Iowa's a one and a half point favorite tonight, and UConn and UConn uh, is a three seed, but they're a three and a half point favorite tonight against SC. So one and a half, three and a half, if you'd like to bet on tonight. So uh, about that. So who do you want to win tonight? Uh, what would, what's the storyline that makes you the most pleased or the most likely to continue following along? I want Iowa and UConn because I want Paige Beckers against Caitlin Clark in the next round. Oh. Because Ari Emma said she's the best player. Oh, yeah. So I want that. And they didn't recruit Caitlin Clark. I, st- I still kind of wish Caitlin Clark had just signed with Notre Dame and we could have watched that. I still, part of me goes, let's just they'd watch be, whatever be, that thing would have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever that thing would have been. Let's, let's, let, let's do that. What I love about Caitlin Clark, watching her play, she's playing with a team full of girls that are not as talented as a lot of the girls on the other teams. She gets the absolute most out of her teammates. Her court vision is elite. And she competes, man. I mean, the fire burns really bright. And I guess that was my part, too. I, I, I laugh at this LSU team at this point. Like I was kind of glad Haley Van Leith did that because, you know, she was the big talker at Louisville and whatever. I'm like, no, be the villain. Come on. Let's. Embrace it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. I mean, let's let's do this tonight if we're going to do it. You know, the TV execs went, oh, yeah. Oh, sure. It's going to get a huge number. Oh, you can inject race into something? Oh. It's going to be a huge number. Yeah. Oh, a huge number. I mean, look. But where I, I guess I'm giving her a break because the guy was racist. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt. The guy in the yes. third largest newspaper in the country was racist. He was. No question. So, okay. Like, if I'm TV, I'm like, oh, thank you. We'll take it. But I was trying to remember when was the last time that I looked forward to a women's basketball game where it was appointment viewing for me. And I'll be honest with you. The last time, Kim Mulkey was playing in the game. <laughs> Her Queen of Sparkles outfit tonight is going to be off the charts you know <laughs> you, you know it is going to be uh, she you, is going to be you're, rick you're going to flair. see her from mars rick flair walking in for the heavyweight championship of the world oh my god but the last time that i was this excited to watch yeah, a sure. women's basketball game it was ulm at louisiana tech unjung lee against kim mulkey i couldn't wait to watch it unjung lee unjung lee you uh, ulm had a brief moment where they were right there with tech for like one year they had two really good players baller Oh, that she could ball. They was no, no, legitimately, it was that place was packed, packed. You couldn't, you couldn't get in if you, if you, you had to work for tickets. I know UConn, Tennessee is the gold standard, but they were the only two. If Carolina wins, it's the most accomplished season in women's basketball history. Yeah, that you went through this collection of stars and mm-hmm. media environments, and you yeah. pulled off two more. Yeah, because they'll have to be. I mean. And if I'm the networks, I'm like anybody but them. But Carolina? Yeah. Give me give me a UConn win. I'll take LSU. The, the, if I'm the networks. You don't want the boring just no. hammer. If I'm the networks, what I really want is I want the Caitlin Clark coronation. Where I think the whole. She beats co- Carolina in the final. The whole country's watching. No, networks her. would want Iowa over LSU tonight. Yeah. UConn over SC. Mm-hmm. Iowa over UConn, South Carolina over NC State, Iowa over South Carolina. Yes. If that the, would be their perfect bracket. If, if they, they can make, have what they wanted, they draw that up. Yeah. Make Caitlin Clark have to go through LSU, Geno, and South Carolina. Because they played Tuesday night final, right? That is correct. That, that Tuesday night final would be must-watch television. Yeah. And it would be the first time in a long time that the women's final was just, you can't miss this. Mm-hmm. Because it was still relatively new and fun last year. It was We didn't get this full year of buildup yeah. the way that we've had it. Yeah, it was like, oh, well, I, I knew Clark was good, but I didn't. Yeah, now it's a totally different thing. Yeah, so. All right. If you got a little prime shrimp, you can make that dinner tonight before the double header kicks off. They make it easy for you to deliver directly to your door. Fewer than 10 minutes, freezer to plate with prime shrimp. A lot of different options. They got the new soy ginger option that uh, is great for hibachi, other proteins, vegetables, and much more. Throw it on some rice. It's great for uh, protein snacks, lunches, or simple dinners. You can get all that with a uh, little bit of a discount. 
use code RG, you get 25% off with Prime Shrimp. Again, five pouches or more, 25% off with our code RG and PrimeShrimp.com. Next time you head up to Oxford, make sure you stop by the College Corner, their uh, newest location all right off of Sisk Avenue in the Oxford Commons, more than 4,000 square feet of the absolute best uh, Rebel gear. Plenty of parking available. Their staff's going to have you in and out, ready for Swayze in uh, no time. It's, it's uh, collegecornerstore.com, plus there's two locations in the uh, Jackson area as well. Uh, we're brought to you by Argent Wealth. Argent based in Ridgeland, Mississippi. They represent clients in more than 20 states. They provide detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much, much more. At Argent, investing is treated like a commodity. Decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. So regardless of your level of wealth, Argent will sit down with you, listen to your goals, study your expenses, and put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan built just for for you. It's myargentwealth.com. Brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. John's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allow him to supply his clients with added values, unique benefits, simply not available to other travelers. Uh, all you do, just if you want a special trip that creates a lifetime of unique memories, is get in touch with John, give him some parameters, give him a budget that's really important. And uh, then sit back, do nothing. He'll give you options that you're not going to find on your own. 901-494-3387 or Edwards at regencytravel.net. And we're brought to you by OPA, Oxford's newest Greek restaurant on the square. It's a uh, perfect place for your company dinner, a festive party event, a fabulous food, great craft libations as well. OPA can accommodate up to 200 guests. For catering or booking information, contact Jeannie. 601-421-7147. Podcast stuff brought to you by Northeast Spark, N-E-S-P-A-R-C, service people across rural communities, two packages, the Ignite, the 100 Mbps, or the Blaze. That's their one gig option. Your hometown team bringing you world-class broadband. That's nespark.com, 662-238-3159. Phone service, phone controls, network security, wireless mesh extender, and much more. So again, give them a call, 662-238-3159. Kind of back to the men for one second. Do you give Bama much of a shot at all? I mean, a puncher shot just because they can score and they can shoot, and sometimes they get so hot that they can keep up with you, but no. Because the problem is you have to play 40 minutes like that. If you have a lull, it's over. Yeah, you got to have your very best They game. don't play down to you. No, you have to have your very best game. Because, I mean, look, I mean, Illinois and San Diego State both at times were there, and then they weren't all of a sudden. Um and again, I got to reiterate this. Illinois is really good. And they got whacked. They're good. <laughs> Legitimately good. <coughs> and Hurley is a bit of a psychopath. So, I mean, he, he's a hell of a coach. He's a hell of a coach. Nate Oates, history with the Hurley family. It's a good game. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I just, I mean, look, I'll be all Wolfpack on. Saturday, but I just it's gonna be hard to keep up. Doesn't feel doesn't feel like it. I, I was hoping for a different final four. Are you? Yeah. I was I, I really feel like Tennessee got cheated. But it's what it is. Look, if if UConn keeps playing like this, none of it matters. This is a coronation. That's true. Two in a row. But in nineteen eighty three we said that about Houston. And they lost to NC State. What was their seed that year? NC State? Mm -hmm. It was like an 11, 12. <laughs> they had to win the ACC tournament to get in. Sounds familiar. If I remember right, they beat Virginia and Ralph Sampson in the Elite Eight. Beat Dominique Wilkins in Georgia in the semifinals. And then beat everybody in Houston in the finals. They went through a bit of a roll. Though. Whoa, whoa. That was Hakeem Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler. Good team. That was a good team. That was a hell of a run. Ralph Sampson, Dominique Wilkins, Clyde Drexler, and Hakeem in one postseason yeah, that you ran through. Derek Wittenberg, Sidney Lowe, Thurl Bailey. Thurl Bailey was a good player. Lorenzo Charles. How old were you? 13. I was in. 
for NC State? All the way. Following the Wolfpack all the way through? All the way. I actually started following them in the ACC tournament. Did you really? Yeah, I had like three or four weeks there where I was a Wolfpack fan. Okay. That was fun. It was, it was wild. I mean, I couldn't, I mean, to this day, can't believe they beat Houston. Keelan Deer commits to Ole Miss, the equipment running back um, over, I don't know, name your school, and they probably had an offer out to uh, to him. Huge get for the Rebels for Huge. the uh, 2025 class. Um, mm -hmm. Like an in-state talent, position of need, clearly, mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways. There's nothing bad to say about it. Uh, hell no, we get this I early mean, in the process. It was, it was big. <coughs> There's every indication that they're going to have an, probably their most talented recruiting class such an interesting spot for their program when you think about it because they're so clearly all in for this year and at the end of this season I mean, they're going to lose a lot of people just to the pros to eligibility and how they retool the roster for 2025 will be fascinating but he'll be a big part of it you mentioned it Lane Kiffin, uh, kind of in passing last week, answered a, uh, a question about the helmet communication, called it a cheat code. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because he declined to use it during the Peach Bowl. Didn't have time. Yeah, did not. Didn't they, 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 they didn't use it. Did, did Penn State? They did, didn't Penn they? Penn State was willing to use it. Yeah, okay. Um, Which, looking back, was an indication that, and I'm not taking anything away from what Ole Miss did, Penn State was not as dialed into that mm -hmm. game as Ole Miss was. And I think this was dialed in. It makes complete sense. And he Lane almost was kind of going, yeah, you defensive guys kept asking for it. Now, good luck because you you're you're, you're going to kind of pay now that this is the case. But yeah, I mean, Lane Kiffin is one of the few coaches out there. There are a few that have an innate ability to read in real time the way that he does to to to, to diagnose and see and change and those things. And now Dart gets that benefit until 15 seconds with really the defense having no ability to counter off of that. Yeah. To where it, it, it is a coach quarterback situation that if you're not very good there, does nothing for you. And if you're good, there is a hell of an advantage potentially for where, hey, there's your guy. Go ahead, throw it. It's done. Peace. I mean, you'll have plays where Kiffin completely get, tell him what to do in real time five seconds later. Yeah. it it The way he answered it, I was like, oh, that's not good for opposing defenses. Where he was like, I don't. Okay. Okay. Because if you time it right, that's it. Well, they go so fast and they get to the line of scrimmage, and very often you'll see the, you'll see the quarterback, most Jackson, look over to the side and they're doing signals. Now you don't have to do the signals. Now he's in his ear. And hey, this is going to be open right here. Yeah. <sighs> Good luck. Hey, look this guy off and then this is going to do this. And then Where it whatever. will really help with a guy like Kiffin is when he has an inexperienced quarterback. He's going to be able to bring him along faster. Jackson probably at this point would see it almost as fast as Lane does. But mm -hmm. But Lane's a savant. It's very possible it takes away some of Dart's really bad errors that he still does have sometimes. Yeah, well, I mean. Not as confused on some things. It's going to give him an elite savant-like uh, another set of eyes it, that's communicating to him. It's going to force the opposing defensive coordinator to really make fast decisions to not overwhelm his linebacker or whoever with too much information. Be curious to see what defenses do, what they do to counter it all, or like if it changes the way they play in any way. Probably fake a lot of injuries. Hmm. going to be a lot of hamstrings. A lot of hamstrings. A lot of cramps. A lot of cramps. Yeah, lot of so cramps. A, yeah. Second quarter cramps. Just, Sorry. you know, just cramped. It's just hot. tweak something. It's hot out. Got a little Achilles thing. Yeah. Because when they fall to the ground, holding their, you can't go. Oh, you're faking. What if he's not? I, I don't mind those tentative rule changes where you punish that though, and the guy's out for a. Bit. Oh, I think he should be out for the series, the rest of the possession. Mm, the possession, yeah, yeah. I think I'm good there. I don't think I have a problem with that. I do. I'm not one to feel sorry for officials much, but I, I do not. Yeah, how do you diagnose? What that? do you do? 
no, kid, you're faking it. And then, no, he tore his calf. You know, <laughs> I don't know what he did. I've got my hands full enough. Uh, today's the first thing I'm looking. Early lines on your men's games. We'll talk about this later in the week, obviously. Uh, Purdue minus eight and a half against NC State. Okay. And UConn 11 and a half against Alabama. Yeah. You wouldn't feel good taking Bama. I'm, I'm, I'm not betting against UConn right now. Sorry. They've go dating back to what was it, the Arkansas game in the Sweet 16 last year, they've blown everybody out by like 40 points. They have won every tournament game two years in a row by double digits. I mean, my God. Historic run. I mean, like the teams that have played against them in the tournament have had no chance. No chance. The last team that even gave them a game was St. John's. Oh, yeah. That was a good game. And they were interested, but they weren't this interested. No. They're pretty checked in right now. They were... They were five and six, I think, in the Big East last January, so a year ago. Mm -hmm. And since that game, whatever made them either five and five or five and six, they're 50 and five since then. That's pretty good. 50 and five. It's rolling. I watched them lose to Creighton that night when the Blue Jays threw it in every hoop imaginable and yeah. just had that night. And Creighton was good. Creighton's good. Yeah. I was kind of pulling for Creighton the other night. The Creighton Tennessee game was a really good game. It was. That was a hell of a game. What's Dalton Connect's pro situation? Oh, he'll get drafted. He's a first round pick. If he gets in the right right team, he'll play a role. That was my problem. That my biggest problem with that athletic quote that I read is that it talks about trying to protect players. But protecting a guard is completely different than protecting a post player. Yeah. Like that doesn't equate in the same way. You don't have to protect Dalton Connect the same way you would have to protect Zach Eady or Klingon to keep them in the game. Yeah. Like that. Well, or just you could keep Eady in the game again. It's every time that the whistle was blown, those weren't all fouls. There's there's contact in the post. Let it go. Mm-hmm. Who's in the uh, is the NIT final happened yet? Who's in that? Any idea? Chase. You don't know it all? No. Okay. George, I didn't know. Is Georgia still in it? They made the Final Four. Yeah, I know they made a run. Yeah, they did make the Final Four. You could be doing that right now. You could be covering NIT games. I don't think so. You out? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that wasn't happening with the team <laughs> I was covering. Go to Butler. The Final Four is Utah, Indiana State, and Georgia Seton Hall. So I hadn't played it yet. Uh, tomorrow, 6 p.m. Oh, can't wait for that. And 8.30 p.m. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Hinkle Fieldhouse is hosting the Final Four. No, at least that's a cool venue. Well, it was Madison Square Garden. Yeah, which was an awesome venue. But it was yeah. a great game at MSG last night, by the way. Thunder Knicks was a great game. Yeah, Utah, Indiana State, Georgia, Seton Hall. Someone asked if we watched Matt Corral play this weekend. I did not. I, I did not watch the UFL or whatever we call it. Did he you had watch? a hell of a game, apparently. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think they were swapping quarterbacks early, and then he just kind of took over from there. <sighs> I, 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 now, I'm sure Tyler's going to come in here this afternoon and want to break down games. It's, it's, it's probably going to be a minute before I watch a professional spring – if Corral has a hell of a year, I mean, Ole Miss could have the UFL MVP and the Canadian Football League MVP. Yeah, there you go. Chad's already got one. I think they trade both of those for the Heisman. I think Tiamu is in the UFL too. Is he? I think so. I think that's correct. Pretty sure. So you did not watch the Memphis Showboats play uh, Houston? I did, I did not. Did you? I saw the highlights on the news last okay. night. No, I did not. <laughs> I watched and I watched. They good, played at Rice's Stadium. I watched a good bit of sports over the weekend. I watched a lot of college baseball. I watched a good bit of the tournament. Mm -hmm. I watched uh, Thunder and Knicks last night. I think I watched the Thunder on Friday night too, but I can't remember. Maybe watched a little of it. But yeah, I watched, a lot, but I did not watch the UFL. I, I probably never will watch the UFL. I have no interest at all. Yeah, um, no, I'm I'm fine. It's all good on that. I'm good. 
All right, I'll come back after our last break. I'll tell you about GNM Pharmacy, 662-236-2222. They deliver locally in the Oxford area, and they offer MedSync. Free prescriptions the same day each month. Take care of you. They also uh, make it easy to transfer your medications. Make one phone call. They take care of the rest. Let them be your community pharmacy. That's in Holly Springs with Tyson Drugs or GNM in Oxford. Again, that's 662-236-2222. We're brought to you by Service Specialist Staffing and Recruiting Agency. They've been connecting great job opportunities to candidates since 1967. If you're on the job hunt, whether you're seeking an entry-level position or you're a seasoned professional, they have opportunities across the board. IT, engineering, dentistry, accounting, law, manufacturing, human resources, more. No matter what it is you're looking for, they can help you at Service Specialist. Their goal is to get to know you, your strengths. They see what you're looking for in your next career move. And they help you find the right fit. It's always free for the candidate. Conversations are kept confidential, so you've got nothing to lose by giving them a call. Service Specialist LTD.com or 601 573 9242. Get the beautiful and healthy smile you deserve at Corinth Dental. Dr. Bubba McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hendrick are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative state-of-the-art procedures that will result in a beautiful, long-lasting smile. From routine checkups to advanced treatment, including implants and Invisalign, Corinth Dental is here to help you achieve your smile goals. Schedule your appointment today. Take the first step toward a better version of yourself at CorinthDental.com. Are you a displaced corporate executive wanting to put your career in your own hands? Are you an experienced entrepreneur looking to diversify? Andy Ludeke can help. He owns multiple franchises and businesses. He uses his expertise to help others find their American dream through a very thorough and free consultation process. So call Andy, put your life and your career in your own hands. It's 100% free, nothing to lose. MyPerfectFranchise.net, Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net or 404-973-9901. Southern Southern Traditions Farm is a 68-acre, 32-stall upscale equestrian training and boarding facility in Canton, Mississippi. Two sand rings, a grass ring, miles of wooded trails, so much offered at Southern Traditions, including horseback riding offerings from beginner lessons uh, with uh, Susan Walt to buying your own horse, competing at nationally recognized competitions. It's also a great venue for uh, corporate outings, reunions, that type of thing. So get in touch with them on Facebook or Instagram at Southern Traditions Farm. And I'll have a mailbag to you on Wednesday. It's brought to you by Art Hayes of Sotheby's International Realty. Are you thinking of making a move? Put the power of Sotheby's to work for you as a licensed agent with Sotheby's and a supporter of all things Ole Miss. Art can help you buy or sell in your hometown or anywhere in the world at no charge to you. Seriously. So call and ask him how. 612-805-5929 or email him at arthur.hayes. That's A-R-T-H-U-R dot H-A-Y-S at lakesmn.com. They typically only hear the, uh, the the negative or the problems. Give uh, say some positive things quickly about uh, Oxford Utility Department. I had uh, some idiots mess up my uh, my yard <laughs> on Friday. Uh, so Thursday night, I uh, noticed that, that they were a certain internet company that's not Spark was uh, used a third party contracting service to dig holes all throughout the neighborhood. Neil's aware of this. He's had it in his neighborhood as oh, well. Oh yes, we have. Uh, holes in the neighborhood to, I'm, I'm assuming install fiber lines is what they're doing. Uh, and Keeping my wife out of prison during some of that okay. was an accomplishment. So everything was cool and whatever. And I mean, pleasant enough uh, until Thursday night and around eight o'clock noticed that my water was not working at all. Um, like no shower, no sink, nothing. And they had left for the day, had gone out and had to borrow in a little wrench thing from a neighbor or whatever, but saw that, that the water was turned off at the meter. So the line from the meter was uh, was turned off. I thought, in my head, I was giving a lot of benefit of the doubt. I said, I'm sure that they were probably digging, turned it off, or got turned it back on, no big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but instead, it uh, so I turned it on, water works, fine, go to bed. Next morning, get a text from a neighbor. It goes, hey, you got water running across your, your driveway. Just FYI there. So they hit a line, caused a problem, turned my water off of the meter, but didn't even tell me. Just literally turned it off and left with no explanation whatsoever. Um, Friday was obviously Good Friday. The office was closed, but I uh, I talked to 
city engineer, the utilities department, very, very, very helpful, knew who it was, uh, was fixed within a few hours. And then the, the reason that I'm thinking about it is just got a call a second ago, and I'm pretty sure it's that same department making sure that overages are covered off my, my, my bill for the week. So thank you. It was not at all your guys' fault, but handled that in a way that was – be uh beyond service but yeah customer service 101 there you uh you put a water line issue in and you simply just turn the water off and leave and hope that what like i was just going to go you know what i don't have water and i'm not even going to ask questions we're good just don't worry about it yeah. moving forward yeah all right who needs water it was friday I had to go get a beer i mean whatever I saw Steve Wolfong move networks today. So, um, would you wait till tomorrow and not do it on April 1st? Because uh, you know some segment of the population is going to go, is it a joke? Oh, that's true. Just for the heck of it. But it's a It's not. It's real. It's but, Monday, yeah. Yeah, I know. But would you have been tempted to just wait a day? I'm assuming you are not an April Fool's person in any regard. Not really. No, I could get annoyed. Like, yeah. just let me go about my yeah. day. I like seeing what Google does every year because they're clever most of the time. Um, Both of the girls are pranksters, so I'm like on my, I'm always very alert. To oh, that. really? Yeah, yeah. I'm on guard today in conversations. Well, that's a good point. It was AT and T third party. <laughs> now it's fine. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> Again, it wasn't their employees, but uh, yeah. Yeah. they were working for them. Yeah. Um, Gmail 20 years ago today was in invented. Really? Google released Gmail 20 years ago. That worked. Well, it was interesting. They, they gave you up to a gig of memory, which back then would have been in 2004 was a ton. Uh, they could hold up to 13,000 emails, I think is what was said at the time. Hotmail at the time could only hold 60 emails. So like that's what the jump was because it it was foreign that you could just search for old emails and keep catalogs. They created the first ever like running thread instead of every email being a different box, all those different things. I mean, really looking back, things that we still would be we still do today without even thinking about it. And they had them all right there ready in two thousand four with essentially its first release. Wow. So, stuff yeah. stuff changes in twenty years. That's always been my point. Like we make this assumption that the way things are today is the way that they will be in 20 years. And they almost assuredly will not be. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're taking care of the charges on the overages. No problems there. They were, they, they pointed that out to me to begin with. And it was not a large leak, but leaks leak. Yeah. I mean, water present across your driveway is water present across your driveway. However you want to shake that out. Typically not a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, let's hope not. Yeah, have they gotten more severe as time has gone on, or do we just play around? Still? Well, uh, luckily for me, is that I'm I'm usually not the target. Okay, they're friends, and like Campbell was the victim of a very elaborate, well thought out prank this year, and when she found that it was a prank, I was my feelings were almost kind of hurt for her, and I was like that they went too far. And she oh, was really? Like, yeah, and she was like, no. I deserved it. Oh, really? And I'm like, really? And she said, oh, yeah. And then she starts telling me about some of the things that she had done to some of those people. And I was like, oh, my God. I mean. Oh, really? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you did kind of deserve it. I mean, they got her back elaborately. It was incredible, the detail that they went to for like two months. And to she handled it fine because she knew. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was, it was was incredible. I mean, they. I was tricked. Really? Yeah, Campbell would send it to us. Do you think this is real? And we were like, yeah, it looks real. I mean, I thought it was real, and then it was not real. It was funny. You got to be pretty close friends to pull off something like that. Otherwise, yeah. hey. They're all really tight. Hey, yeah. asshole. But I was like, yeah, well, to the point where at the end of the prank, a couple of our friends were like, hey, we've gone too far. We've taken this too far. <laughs> We've, I'm, I'm out. Well, self analysis here. Yeah. That hey, I'm, I'm I'm no longer in my comfort zone. This is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Still two weeks away from the uh, Ole Miss spring game event. 
spectacular event. Event. I'm curious to see if, what, what if, happens if they have a game, like any actual if they plays play, from scrimmage. Do they play tackle football? Yeah. Because your guess is no today, yeah. or is it half and half? My guess is no. Okay. And why would you? Like really, why? Why would you? You have this team. It's a veteran team. It's an experienced team. Do you really need to see Walter Nolan make tackles? Do you really need Ulysses Bentley getting tackled? Do you really need someone to decleat Trey Harris across the middle of the field? Do you need Caden Prescorn playing tackle football in April? No, you need Caden Prescorn playing tackle football in September. Had you been one of the coaches yesterday, would you have gone on and played with the screwed up three point line? Mm, I'd want it fixed. Okay. But they would have had to delay it today. They couldn't have fixed it last night. I don't know. I'd want it fixed. 3% lower on the uh, percentages from that side versus the other side yesterday. It's a very small sample size, obviously, but. I mean, be one thing in November. We're like, okay, well, whatever. We'll play the game. But no, I'd want it fixed. It's been corrected for UConn USC tonight. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd want it fixed. Well, it's a bigger deal depending on how you play, too. Yeah. I mean, don't shoot many threes, whatever. whatever. I just don't want anything. You got enough going on. I don't want to add something else. Or get in their head, the players. Right. That's what I'm hey, saying. Hey, I'm shooting from whatever it was. I don't know. Right. An inch and a half more. I, again, I have no clue. But. Well, if it affects one shot in what turns out to be a one point game, it was one shot. It maybe affects it the other way. Maybe you made that one. You wouldn't have made the one. There you go. It's true. Just saying. That's what happens. All right. Uh, Rebel Grove, 10 thoughts up from Mr. McCready. Wrote about Trent Lyons this morning, the uh, Ole Miss freshman who is uh, five for eight on the season. He's also walked a couple times. He's a 700 on base percentage, but he has no starts. He's played in nine games, and he's only played in one game this season that either was before – the last or next to last inning are in a game that was less or fewer than seven runs on the differential. So essentially it's played at blowouts only. He got pinch hits in all three Kentucky games this weekend. He went two for three in those three at bats. Well, you know where I'm going with this. Unless you really believe, and I don't mean that fantasy land belief, unless you really believe that the guys that you're putting out on the field are going to turn this thing around. Play the. I got to find out who can, who among my young guys I can, pl I can play. Mm-hmm. Who's, who are we building around? Who can I count on? Because I got to get in the in the portal and all that stuff. I need to know, and I can't know if I don't play them. I I can only guess. I got to know. And if that means, well, I mean, hey, because at some point, Chase, there is no difference between ten and twenty and nine and twenty one. There's no difference between seven and twenty three and ten and twenty. There's just no damn difference. Mm -mm. You're not going to the tournament. It doesn't effing matter. No, anything less than 13 is exactly the same. So play if, if I if I get to a place where I don't think realistically I can get to 13, 14 SEC wins, and they're not there yet. No, no, no. But if I get to that place, I, I'm playing my young guys. Yeah. So, rebelgrove.com. Take care. Talk to you soon.